actually like to uh, invite our next guest, who is uh, an expert on the topic. Uh, Ms. Uh, Diane Post, she's a human rights lawyer, legal representative of the victims of the lead poisoning camps in Mitrovica and the Kosovo Roma Rights Coalition. You, you have the floor, thank you. Thank you very much and thank you for having me here today. This case came to me through Paul Polanski, who brought it to the European Roma Rights Center when I worked there. Okay, all right, so to make a very long story very short because we don't have time, I will say that between 2005 and 2011, I brought six different lawsuits in three different countries, in European countries, in Kosovo, and in the United States. So during that time up to now, I have had two wins. Two of these cases I won. The first one came in 2015 after four years of fighting and that was with the European Rule of Law program. They came to Kosovo after the United Nations left and they were to train the Kosovo prosecutors and judges on how to have a good criminal and civil legal system. Well, we had filed, in, back in 2006, we had filed a criminal case against whomever injured the Roma. We know who put them on the lead poison land, but you still have to bring a criminal case to say, somebody injured him, find out who it is, and give them criminal penalties. So we filed that in 2006, and guess what happened to it? Nothing, <laughs> nothing ever happened to it. So I sued the European group that they should investigate. Well, it took four years and the panel in Kosovo agreed and said the European group should investigate now. Well, they didn't. They say th they, they still haven't to this day. And the Kosovo court still says you have to investigate. Well, you all know that there's not going to be an investigation 20 plus years after the event that will ever result in anything positive. So that was the first win. The second win was in 2016. So 11 years after the suit was filed. And that was against UNMIC for leaving the Roma on that poison land, people died, women had miscarriages, people suffered many physical injuries, so I brought the case against the UN. And after 11 years, I won. And they told the UN to apologize, to pay money, to educate, and all of these things. And what did the UN do? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. So since that time, I have been fighting to make these groups do what the court has ordered them to do. So the court is a mechanism, but it doesn't always result in the desired result. It doesn't come out to anything. So I'm still going to keep on fighting until I die. <laughs> <laughs> Barry said, why stop then? Keep going. But, so anyway, I do have a few more options, and we, I know we don't have time to talk about them, but that's where we are. I want to give Barry some time because he's going to talk about an action plan, what can be done, what we need to do, and that is, of course, why we're here, is to come up with an action plan of what to do. So, Barry, over to you. It is very late. Uh, we've gone very long. My friend the Ricardo is waiting to show Shani how to really do body movement and dance because his, <laughs> his conducting kind of uh, at least competes with Shani's ability. Uh, we have no translation? Yes. Oh, you do have translation. OK. Uh, I, the translator has a bad leg. He hurt his leg, and now I'm going to hurt his ear 
because since we have little time, I'm going to talk fast, and he should just do what he can because, uh, uh, sh uh, because Ricardo wants to play music and you want to eat and we want to move on. So, first of all, I want to give big salutation to Grattan Puxen, because Grattan Puxen, for 60 years, for 60 years has worked to elevate and find you know, human rights for Roma, all vizas. We hear a lot about one vizza, this special Sinti, but they're just one vizza of so many and that are represented here today. And for the travelers community of the Irish, English, and Scottish travelers, some of which are represented here today. And he has worked tirelessly in Europe, but he also worked in the United States because for a couple of years he was in Los Angeles with me and we worked to elevate political and historical consciousness of Roma in America. And we brought a delegation of Roma to the White House and to the Senate and we lobbied to have inclusion in the U.S. Holocaust Memorial Council and a, a presidential appointment and at the uh, Holocaust Museum and what have you. We worked very hard at that for years and that led to me working with, uh, on Holocaust issues um, through Syed Balic, Radical Juric, uh, you know, Shkuka. Uh, I, I was the point person on the negotiations with Austria, Germany, and the Swiss banks which brought a lot of money and what happened to the money? I'm working on a book because this is a story of the good, the bad, and the very ugly, and it involves Roma leadership, it involves Roma organizations, and it involves NGOs and governments, all working to prevent inclusion. And that also includes the, you know, the EVZ a representative was here today, the German trust, the German government and the trust worked very hard to keep Roma from representation on, on the trust commission and in its works. And I have documentation of this and maybe Keenan is gonna help me publish uh, this book. But Grattan led me to be working with this Kosovo coalition. He called me and we formed a unique and powerful coalition of Roma in many different countries who are living in a diaspora who fled the death, destruction, and property confiscation in Kosovo and, and now over 20 years later have, are still on the outside. But, but I've come today, and I don't know if there'll be time, with a kind of action plan, which is basically rise up and wake up. And it's you know, Ushti Ushti Opre Roma, it's the Roma that has to, to pay attention. It's not, it, this is not about lawyers. Lawyers will not bring the success. It's only the people. But it's, it's, it's rise up and it's wake up. But it's not wake up of Roma. It's to wake up the sleeping governments and the sleeping government officials and political leaders who are dreaming. They're sleeping and they're dreaming of a world without Roma. That's their, that's their dream. But that isn't, but that, that obviously is not the reality. And the action plan that I'm uh, suggesting, and I'll give you a, a, a quick reference to it, are looking at pressure points. Where are the pressure points that may help bring action? One pressure point is the Kosovo government. What does it want? And you know, this is a, a government with much corruption and problems. You have, uh, you know, former president uh, Thraci, who was being prosecuted at the International uh, uh, Court of Justice for human rights crimes. And uh, he's the chief prosecutor was a guy named Jack Smith but he was just brought back to Washington, D.C. to prosecute Donald Trump. So he's gone from Kosovo to Washington and working on the January 6th issue and the, and the stolen documents of Trump. Uh, so there's something interesting in common between Kosovo and the United States. The 
is the the pressure points are the the kosovo government what does it want what it wants is european union membership it wants to be part of the council of europe it wants relationships with nato and those are all things that require public hearings that need to be monitored by roma and to be participated in in those hearings to prevent it i'm working with kurdish people and other minorities and with kurds in turkey i have uh, testified at the European uh, Union Parliament, and th that will be an opportunity for Roma to participate and should participate to work to block it until they take until Kosovo government takes appropriate action their membership in the EU Council of Europe and with their relationship with with NATO. Another uh, pressure point is the host countries. Roma are living in France, Germany, Belgium, and other countries, and those countries uh, are, you know, standing back where they have people living in their country who are part of the, uh, uh, the, the political network that should be speaking up in those countries about their relationship with Kosovo and to rectify the issues of people living in France and Germany, Belgium and elsewhere about Kosovo. And the other thing is this. Um, I know, you know, we hear about a actions about uh, lawyers and trying to enforce uh, uh, rights and laws, but the fact is that the Kosovo constitution itself, one, provides that all of you living in the diaspora from Kosovo are citizens equal to any citizen in Kosovo. The Kosovo Constitution provides for restitution of people who lost property and the rights uh, of, of those people. It provides for affirmative action. Anybody who was property was taken or whose rights were uh, disabled have a right under the Constitution to equality. Now, I know you don't have uh, any confidence in enforcement of anything under the Constitution, but it should be pressed, it should be advocated. You shouldn't give up because it's pressure, but it also is pressure that is reflected on what the European Union will do and the Council of Europe, they all want to hear that rights of people living in France, Germany, Belgium and all, rights are being violated by these people. And so there are many pressure points that should be uh, advocated and, and pursued by the people living in, fr in France and elsewhere. So yes, terrible things happened and the fact of the matter is that Action can be taken, not relying again on lawyers and courts uh, and the years and, and, and thinking that you know, they'll take care of it, but it's the people themselves, if they rise up, speak up, and wake up those government officials and those agents who are sleeping and dreaming of a world without Roma. Be heard, stand up, and... Um, take action, and that's the action that, that should be taken. So thank you. I just want to respond to something. Every movement has many pieces. You need the academics, you need the journalists, you need the activists, but you also need lawyers. Lawyers are not the solution but they are part of the plan. The people have to be the solution. But you do need the lawyers because you bring a carrot and you bring a stick, and the lawyers are the stick. They have to be afraid of you. They have to know that you have power and will cause them pain if they don't do right. And uh, wait, let me finish. Yeah, go ahead. And it doesn't sound very nice, but being nice is not going to get you your rights. You have to be able to show you have some power and that you have a stick. So I'm not advocating violence or anything, but I'm saying that you got to be strong and you got to have some hammer behind you, and that's what the lawyers do. Right. I, I just want to. 
I just want to say that in speaking fast and you know, and at the end of this program, I left something out and I want to tell you what stick and what hammer has been used so far and you know, it has made some progress. One is that a year ago, this coalition that didn't exist before a year, that is called the Roma Rights, uh, I mean the, the Kosovo Roma Rights Coalition, it sent a demand letter to the government, to Osmani and Kurti in Kosovo, asking, you know, setting out all of the crimes and all of the things that happened, and saying, let us sit down to find a solution. This is a, a coalition of, of the diaspora of over 200,000 people, and let us sit down and together find a solution. The response was silence. There was silence. They, they, no, they wouldn't meet with us in Kosovo. They wouldn't meet at an embassy. It was silence. At the same time, there was another hammer that came from them, and that was that Kosovo government and Osmani published a four-year plan for, for Kosovo and Roma. It's 115 pages, not a single word about the, by, about the Kos Kosovars in diaspora. Nothing about the Roma in all of these countries. So it was a double silence, both in response to our letter and uh, in this report, a four-year plan from, from 2022 to 2020, uh, 2026. So um, this is what needs to be followed up. And governments don't know about this. The uh, EU parliament that's considering uh, Kosovo and all, and it should be hammered. These are things that, yes, lawyers can be the hammer and do that, and we will work with you, but there needs, the, the Roma population needs to uh, stand up and wake up the sleeping politicians. Thank you very much.